Dear sisters and brothers, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the one whose advent we await, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Reading Malachi's words in our Old Testament passage appointed for this second Sunday in Advent brought back some memories to me brought back some memories of things I hadn't thought of in a very long time, but things that I think are worth rethinking. Now, Grandma introduced me to the Fuller Brush Man. He's the guy who came with his panel truck full of smelly cleaning supplies, things that were too caustic to even touch. He makes an appearance today. And... I recalled a short story entitled Revelation, which I read while studying this very prophet, Malachi. Now last week in Pastor Brian's sermon, we heard the words of Jesus from Luke's gospel as he taught about the importance of keeping an eye out for signs of his coming, of the, of the end of the world. It was a, a forward-looking, futuristic reading. But on this second Sunday of Advent, we're pulled into the distant past to hear the words of an ancient prophet, Malachi. He points us to someone who is coming to prepare the way for the Lord. He speaks of a messenger who will purify the people's hearts. As we heard in Luke's gospel, that messenger is John the Baptist. God is sending an emissary, Malachi wrote, who comes intending to cleanse your souls. Hmm. A bit strange, don't you think? In the midst of our hopeful Advent waiting, an old-time prophet makes an appearance and, surprise, he promises us a pre-Christmas scrub-down. We were expecting some words of encouragement and assurance, but instead, no, we're told that before God in the flesh arrives, we had better take a bath. Almost 25 years ago now, Professor Terry Fretheim of Luther Seminary introduced me to a Southern writer by the name of Flannery O'Connor. He often assigned her writings to us as he recognized and appreciated O'Connor's ability to really tell it like it is by using characters that were both flawed and redeemed. In her work, the reality of our broken and sinful humanity was always juxtaposed with God's unexpected grace. And as we studied this minor prophet, Malachi, we were assigned one of O'Connor's short stories entitled Revelation. Now the story's main character, Mrs. Ruby Turpin, is the domineering wife of a pig farmer. She's also an appalling racist. She categorizes everybody, black and white, rich and poor, educated, uneducated. She, she classifies people according to this elaborate scale of bigotry that she is constantly adjusting to suit her needs. Worst of all, Ruby Turpin actually views her fondness for making distinctions based upon race or class to be her greatest virtue. Well, one day, While Ruby is sitting in the waiting room of her doctor's office, expressing to herself her gratitude that she's neither black nor poor, she is assaulted by a young girl who hits her smack in the middle of the forehead with her textbook. And then this young woman, this high school student, calls Ruby a warthog from hell. That accusation turns Ruby Turpin's world upside down. For you see, Ruby understands this attack not to be simply the deranged act of an overstressed teenager. No, she understands this assault to be a message sent directly 
to her from none other than God Almighty himself. Her reaction addresses the big question of the day, the same question Malachi's words churn up to. Is Ruby Turpin right? Does God approach us to whack us upside the head and call us a nasty name? I don't know about you, but I much prefer being called a beloved child of God to being addressed as a warthog from hell. Who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? Asked the prophet Malachi. For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. Now both of those images I think are, are more than a little frightening. A refiner's fire is the forced air white hot blaze that melts metallic ores and brings their impurities up to the surface. And a fuller's soap is the strong lye based cleanser used to bleach the impurities from cloth. Fire and soap, says Malachi, are exactly what are needed to clean us up properly. Now, I will be the first to admit that neither of those things seems especially Christmassy. And yet we're told that the messenger who comes to prepare us for the Lord arrives with flames in one hand and a caustic detergent in the other. He comes to boil off the impurities of our souls and to apply a coarse scrub brush to our spirits. A Hallmark card Christmas commercial is not what Malachi represents. So why on earth is such a passage of scripture appointed in the midst of this happy season? Why this concern for cleanliness and purity as we head toward Christmas? Well, I think we all probably understand the importance of being clean. You've told your children, as I've told mine, to wash their hands with soap before sitting down at the table for a meal. And I've often heard parents say to older children, as I said to others myself, you need to wash your hands before you hold the baby. We know that physical cleanliness is important for our personal and our communal health. Yet today's reading from Malachi prods us to take this a little bit further, suggesting that maybe this wisdom holds true on an inner spiritual level as well. Malachi's words make us wonder, is there a sense in which we need regular purification of our spirits? Do our souls need a shower before Christmas? Perhaps as we make our way to Bethlehem in the manger this December, the prophet Malachi is simply reminding us that we need to wash before we can hold the baby. Back to Ruby Turpin. When she gets home from the doctor's office with a bruise on her forehead, she stomps out to her shed and she picks up a hose and she begins washing down her pigs with a forceful stream of cold water. She is angry. She's angry at God. What right, she thought, does God have to suggest that she, the upstanding citizen and fine Christian woman that she is, why would God suggest that she is a warthog from hell? And as soon as her husband's out of earshot, Ruby looks to the heavens and growls, what did you send me a message like that for? How am I a hog and me both? How am I saved and from hell too, she asks. How am I saved and from hell too. I think that that's probably one of the most profound theological questions ever posed in American fiction. And it's also a question that we know quite well at this time of year, at least if we're honest with ourselves. I, for example, can spend hours and hours trying to make a happy and memorable Christmas for my family, but then I lose my patience with them in just an instant. How can I do that? How can I be planning a special gift for my beloved one moment and in the next spew hurtful words at him? 
How can I hum Christmas carols and at the same time enter or exit the store from the door where the Salvation Army volunteer is not ringing his bell? How can I ache for my mother's depression and Parkinson's syndrome and emotional neediness and yet resent the daughter guilt I feel if I don't go visit each week on my day off. A visit meaning a three-hour drive there, a three-hour visit, and a three-hour drive back home. How am I saved? And from hell, too. How can it be that we are simul justus et peccator, at the same time sinners and saints, as Martin Luther so aptly described our human condition? Well, friends, here are the facts. God both loves us and judges us. Or perhaps more accurately, it's because God loves us that God judges us. That's the deep truth that lies at the heart of Malachi's prophecy. Our gracious God so loves us that his great desire is to see us freed from the dirt and the grime that covers our soul. Now, let me be perfectly clear about something. God is not saying, I refuse to let you come to me until you clean up. No. Hear this clearly. God loves us beyond our understanding, even when we remain in our filthiest state. No. Instead, God is saying, I am going to clean you up. I will scrub away everything that keeps you from truly experiencing the joy that awaits you as my follower. Each one of us likely approaches our world, our relationships, even the Christmas gatherings that we'll look forward to with burdens of one kind or another. We carry with us old grudges or hurt feelings or misunderstandings that we simply can't let go. In fact, instead of coming clean, we've often secretly nurtured those wounds, allowing them to coat our souls with gunk. No wonder God thinks it's time to break out the fire and the soap. Why this promise of God's judgment? Is it out of some cruel desire to see us dangling over the flames, you know, sinners in the hands of an angry God? Well, I don't believe it. In fact, I believe just the opposite. God judges us in order to save us. God judges us through Christ. God wants to clean up our soil, souls of every stain and soil so that we might have life and have it abundantly. And that's what will happen in holy baptism with little Amelia in just a little while. Near the end of Flannery O'Connor's story, Ruby Turpin, standing outside with her pigs, has a vision, the revelation from which the story gets its name. She sees a ladder on which groups of people are ascending to heaven, and they're walking together in the groups that she, in her prejudice, had placed them. And Ruby and those who were like-minded with Ruby are bringing up the rear. They are the last, following all of those whom they've despised for so long. It turns out that Ruby's bigotry is not her finest virtue, and she realizes it at long last. You know, sometimes the things we need purged from our spirits are precisely those things that we're most proud of, even those pieces of us that we consider our strengths and our virtues are at risk when the purifier of souls comes to town. And that's the promise of the season. Malachi's gift to us this day is to picture for us a God who lays out fire and soap this Advent, a God who wants to cleanse us from everything that would prevent us from standing in awe at the manger. Why does God do this? Well, there's a clue in Flannery O'Connor's story that I haven't yet mentioned. The name of the girl at the beginning of the story, the girl who threw her book at Ruby Turpin in the doctor's office, that girl's name is Grace. Refiner's fire and fuller's soap are harsh indeed. So are the words of John the Baptist, the messenger whom 
Malachi pointed to. Even so, may our gracious God who approaches us with fire and soap this Advent sear away old grudges, our hurt hearts, and heal us. May he wash away the hardness in our hearts and wash clean even the self-righteous attitudes that we think are virtuous. Indeed, may we allow him to scrub away anything and everything that might stand in the way of us approaching the manger. Let us pray, God in heaven, clean us up so that we too might hold the baby. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite